Laptops aren't just for the busy business professional anymore. Now even elementary students are using them in classroom activities. The students in Jeremiah Starr's fourth grade classroom are starting work on a project about Iowa. But instead of heading to a computer lab to start their research, they're checking out some websites right at their desks. Go. The word Iowa comes from the American Indian tribe of the same name. Through a grant, last year Still Elementary received 30 MacBook laptops, 30 iPods, and an Apple server to use in their classrooms. The laptops are spread throughout the school, and Mr. Starr's fourth grade class is home to six of those laptops. So the students work in groups to research information online and then create podcasts of that information. The students um, have really picked up on that in that they've got to create their own writing to make the podcast, but they don't really see it as, I'm writing a paper. Um, they write the paper and then they're speaking it into the podcast. So it makes that much that learning that much more fun for them that you know we can kind of get away with getting them to here, here write this three page paper. Now you're going to read it into the into the uh, laptop and create a podcast with it. Zach, who else can put stuff on the internet? Everybody in the world. Anyone in the world that has a computer and has the right software can put stuff on the internet. So say you are looking for something about the state of Iowa. Is everything in the state of Iowa going to be good stuff? No. And when I say good, I don't mean good as in happy, nice things. I mean, <laughs> is it all going to be accurate, correct? No, what if no. I bet we could find a site that says the capital of Iowa is Iowa City. Would that be correct? No. 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 With so much information on the web, Mr. Starr has to make sure that his students are accessing reliable sites. So as part of the research, he teaches them the difference between a site like Wikipedia and the University of Iowa. Well, the University of Iowa, that's, a educa that's where you get to college and stuff. And then other one, you can just have people get on the internet and put stuff down. Well, we research things um, try, um, so we can practice to get, so when we get older, know how to research better. And sometimes we write, pa we write papers to practice our writing. And I think it's a lot of fun learning new things. When it comes to presenting the information they learn, the students have said goodbye to the old-fashioned cardboard cutouts for presentations and hello to a 21st century way to show off their research. And the um, word Iowa comes from the American Indian tribes of the same name. We'll have our state reports coming up and it's definitely going to be available to them as something to do instead of um, writing out the report and making, in the past we'd had like big billboards to come and signs to look at. Um, our, our goal is definitely with some of the students to, uh, instead of having all that, set out an iPod and take a look at their state report and it will all be there with the push of a button. Here's everything I've done. And as, mer as much work has to go into that as in the past with like the cardboard cutouts and the big map and here's all this stuff, you know, they're putting in considerable, probably more time making the podcast, it takes a lot of teacher time to put in before you even put it in the kids' hands. If, if you're not prepared for every possible question that may come up, then it, it's going to snowball. In addition to researching information online, the students are also using the laptops to create some fun reader's theater presentations, where the students get to practice their writing and delivery. The other group created a Sigmund Freud and Albert Einstein reader's theater that once they started with it, um, adding in sound effects to the Reader's Theater that made it so much better um, and putting in like sitcom laughter to jokes that maybe for a lot of fourth graders wouldn't catch that it's a joke in the, in the reading, but when then they listen to it and they hear that laughter, that kind of gets them that, that inner voice thinking, mm, what did that part mean? I can rewind, I can listen to it, and oh, now I get the joke. In 1927, Dr. Sigmund Freud visits Germany. When Albert Einstein hears of this visit, he invites Freud to his home. Freud is fam as famous in the field of psychology as Einstein is in the field of physics. Good day to you, uh, Freud. Welcome to our home. Please come in. I see that your wife has experienced no childhood trauma to affect her manners. I beg your pardon? Never mind, he seems to think my absent mindedness started in my childhood. That wouldn't surprise me at the least. You've been absent minded since I have known you. 
The new technology may be fun and cool for the kids in the classes, but it also reminds them that it takes a lot of prep work to make a quality product. Those that have taken the time to prep ahead of time do a much better job. And the kids have really responded to that. They know um, today when we were working on our, our Iowa history, their instant thought was, do we need to write this out? And yeah, we need to write this out and make sure it makes sense and make sure it sounds good. Uh, and they're, they're taking that part of their learning on their own and they're taking care of it themselves, which is something that in the past without this technology, without using it in the classroom, it would be something that a teacher may have to remind a student multiple times, you know, let's write this out before we say it. Let's really think about this. And now they're kind of taking care of it on their own. The other bonus to that is once it's, once it's written, once it's read, once it's put in the laptop, they can pull it back and listen to it again. And if it doesn't sound right, they can make changes to the script, they can make changes to just reading it again and changing the expression in their voice, and they're making the quality product instead of the teacher doing it for them. While the students are creating digital audio and video files, they've not made the files available for public download on the internet just yet. Mr. Starr hopes that will come later on. But for now, students just bring home their work via the iPod. The iPods we've tried to send home, um, and that's just kind of a way for us to show the parents what the kids are learning and what the kids are doing. And we've had good response from that. The, the families that have seen them, um, you know, the parents have thought, wow, this is pretty cool. I, I almost think that it's a little scary to some of them that, you know, my kid's coming home with this iPod. I don't know that that's a great idea, but uh, there's been positive response. I've gotten a lot of emails from um, one family in particular that was very happy to have it and very, very excited to see that that's what their son was doing. So um, we're going to keep pushing that. And if anything, it, it just gives the kids a chance to share with mom and dad what they're doing. And, you know, it puts that smile on their face and makes them happy. And having the technology in the classroom, it, it's night and day difference between the kids' involvement to their cooperation to, you know, the simplest thing of get your eyes on the speaker. Um, you know, to, for some kids that's what it takes to get them to really engage in the classroom uh, and if that's what it takes for them then, th then that's kind of what we're trying to do. We're trying to push that envelope and, and say how can we get each kid involved? How can we get, take the next step? Especially for our upper, our upper kids that are really at the top, you know, th they need something to push them and this, this allows for that to happen. In addition to creating content for their own classwork, the students have been thinking about ways to make audio and video materials for other grade levels as well. Just last month, they created a Body Basics podcast to help show the first grade students how they should sit in class. It's a brave new world out there, and these students are embracing it. For Channel 12, I'm Brianna Wright. Thanks for watching.